Hi, we're Richard and Jackie from Early Retirement Wanderlust. We love our camper vanning and we love camper vanning all year round. And it's a travesty if you don't get out in the camper van in winter. So we're bringing you out to one of our favourite campsites in the Lake District, a National Trust campsite, to show you how great winter camping can be. For those of you that haven't seen our channel before, we're Richard and Jackie. We've owned our VW T6 camper van Nelson for the last six years and we have done over 600 nights in him and over 100,000 miles and we just love year-round camping. Yeah, winter camping is very different to summer camping but that doesn't make it any less enjoyable. We love getting away in our van in the winter. It's really cosy. We find places that have got nice pubs that we can go to to make sure we keep nice and warm. We love getting away in winter. And in our last video, which I'll put in the link somewhere up there, we took you through how to prepare for winter camping as opposed to summer camping. So we thought it was only right and proper that we actually tested that out and brought you out on our first winter trip of the year. <laughs> we did think we'd got a nice weather window and it was going to be really sunny and it was yesterday, but today's testing our winter camping skills. So hopefully in this video, you'll get an insight into our daily routines when we're winter camping. It is very different to summer camping. And we've chosen to bring you along to the National Trust campsite at Langdale because it is probably one of the best campsites that's set up for winter camping and it just makes camping in the cold and the wet that little bit more comfortable. We've also bought all our wet weather hiking gear because we intend to get out no matter what the weather's like and show you some of our favourite routes around here. And most importantly of all, the campsite is really close to an absolutely cracking hub of walkers and climbers that hopefully we'll be able to take you along to. Yep, at the moment, as you could probably hear from the video, it is blowing a bit of a hooli outside, so hopefully the plans will work.
quite a busy day yesterday and we had a lot of running around to do before we set off to the lakes. So we had our tea at home and didn't set off to get here until about eight, half eight. Yeah, one of our tactics when we come up to the lakes, particularly if we're going to arrive late, is not to book into the campsite because it feels like a little bit of a wasted night. So we just did a little park up, arrived late, left early, and it meant that we were coming into the Langdale Valley just before 10 o'clock, which was amazing. Yeah, we did try to park in one of the public car parks, but it was going to be £8.50 for the day, which seemed a lot to us considering we were actually camping only a mile and a half down the road. So we actually went to see if we could cheekily get onto the campground at 10 and they were ace. Yeah, the campsite, as you would expect at this time of year, was pretty deserted and they'd got our camping spot ready for us. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've parked up, walked down here and we are bagging Wainwrights as we speak on a beautiful day. Yeah, it's been really sunny so far. In fact, I've been absolutely roasting because I've got my full winter walking kit on. And that's one of the bonkers things about winter camping because you can have the most terrible weather and you know it's definitely going to end and then you can have the most fantastic weather and it's definitely going to end <laughs> so you've just got to get out there and chance your arm really. Yep so we've done one Wainwright already I think Richard tells me it was Tarn Crag. I think so and then we're doing Blee Rig so I'm really excited on my stamp collecting <laughs> because it's the last couple of Wainwrights in book three so uh, that would be the Langdale Valley fully done by the end of the day. He can get his little pencil out and tick them off tonight. Nothing better. <laughs> So we'll see you later down at the campsite. Probably go and have a scoop as well. Yep, definitely. See you later. Bye. One of the things we love in winter camping is just getting back in off the mountains and cooking a nice meal. So we've got a gnocchi dish tonight with a fresh tomato sauce and chorizo, peppers and onion. So nice time cooking, listening to music. So welcome to the reality of camper van life. We had the most unbelievable day yesterday in terms of weather and I think we tempted fate on the tops when we said the weather is always going to change. We had a massive storm last night blow through and it was blowing the van around, it was blowing the cover around, it hosed it down and it's pretty miserable out now. But <laughs> we managed to get everything dry yesterday in the campsite drying room and we're just cooking some breakfast now. So the plan is a bit of ground coffee. Uh, I think Jackie's gonna get on and make some blueberry pancakes and then we're gonna decide what we're gonna do. We've gotta stick to our guns, got all the waterproof gear. There's a couple of Wainwrights close to here that are relatively quick up and downs that I definitely wanna tick off. So I think we'll be going regardless of the weather, but we know that we're gonna come back to a warm van, a warm campsite, hot showers, great little pub, and then we'll see how we go today.
One of our favourite breakfasts in the van is just making pancakes with some blueberry and syrup. It's really easy. We just have a protein shaker that we put a scoop of flour in. I put two eggs in just to make it a little bit more eggy for a bit more protein. Um, a scoop of milk and then a little bit extra for good luck because um, it makes it a little bit thinner. And that's it. We just cook the pancakes. Well, after we finished that very wet and boggy walk, uh, we went back to the van and had a bit of food, but disaster struck a little bit the next morning. Yeah, you might not realise it's actually a few days later and we're actually on our next camper van trip out in the wilds. But uh, yeah, we had to draw everything to a sharp conclusion and it all started the following morning when again we got a knock on the door. Yet in the Lake Districts, on three different campsites, we've had a knock on the door that we've got to move the van. The um, winds had picked up in the night and we did notice it was buffeting the van a little bit, but the National Trust Warden got us up at eight and told us we had to move the van. So that was a rude awakening to say the least and we did move <laughs> a little bit further down the campsite. I'm not entirely sure how much safer it was because there were trees everywhere and um, they do have a little local rule actually that you might need to be aware of that if the winds get above 50 miles an hour then they have to evacuate the campsite so that was a bit of an issue and then we had a call from our daughter Georgia who had been admitted to hospital because she had pneumonia. Yeah she's only 27 so it's a bit of a shock so as any 27 year old does we got um, a mercy call mum dad can you come and see me <laughs> so that was it we had to go back down to Manchester she's really on the mend now though, um, antibiotics have kicked in. So we've got to try now and somehow make sense of this video and bring it to a close. And we realized that we hadn't given you a campsite review of the National Trust campsite at Langdales. And I hadn't told you just how awful the weather was when Richard made me go out on that last walk. We um, are fair weather walkers. We do like getting out in the winter, but we never particularly set out in the rain and it chucked it down that day. And Richard was so desperate to get this one wane right in. It was only a kilometre up and down, he kept telling me, to the point where he started sulking and said he would do it on his own. I foolishly at that point said, well, if you do it on your own, it doesn't count as a wane right for you to tick off because you both need to do them, which meant that I had to do the walk. And I don't really understand what the issue is. It was, uh, you know, what could have possibly gone wrong? It was towards the end of the day. It was storming, blowing and raining. We'd got an hour of daylight left and uh, we were the only people on the mountain. But we did bag the Wainwright and I did get to little pencil ticket off in my book so I was quite happy. And he bribed me with a pint in the pub in front of the fire to warm up. 
So we stayed for two nights on the campsite. The first night we had electricity and it's £23 for the van with electricity and £7 per extra person, so that was £30. The second night we'd actually moved for the day because we went out hiking and decided we didn't need electricity the second night, which did save us a bit of money. I think it was about £25. So yeah, it's not bad value for winter camping with nice warm showers. One of the things on the website is that you're only allowed to book for two nights. Yes, so we did have to ring um, to the main switchboard to allow us to only book for one night at a time. And I think they are quite strict on that in the summer, whereas they are quite relaxed yeah. in the winter. You can just book one night at a time. To be fair, you could just turn up at that point. <laughs> there was only, I think there's about six or seven vans on the whole site. So yeah, there was plenty of space. We absolutely love the Langdale Valley and the campsite is ideally located right at the head of the valley. So it's a bit of a drive in and it is very, very isolated, but it does have a pub on its doorstep. In fact, it's got a couple of pubs within walking distance, um, but by the nature of its remoteness, the phone signal is really, really sketchy. Um, it's a bit of a drive if you need supplies that go beyond what's available on the campsite. Um, but it is what we love. It's splendid isolation. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. And at the moment, all the sheep are down in the valley and it's just got Herdwick sheep everywhere. And I love Herdwick sheep. It's Jackie's happy place. <laughs> it is. The National Trust campsites have amazing facilities for winter camping, which is why we chose it. Um, it's quite newly renovated in the shower block. It's got uh, lots of toilets, but I quite like the fact that you go right to the back of the toilet block and you've got a separate, almost airlocked door to go through to get to the shower area. And the shower area is really well heated. So it's lovely having a nice hot shower when you get back. Yeah, the whole site's really quite eco. It has its own uh, energy system that works off biomass and that means that you've got constant hot water and constant underfloor heating in most of the facilities. Another really important thing for winter camping is the drying rooms and we were impressed because there were two pretty good drying rooms on site. They were and we made pretty good use of them because we got soaked on that second hike and so did everybody else that was on the campsite so that even though there was only seven vans the drying rooms were absolutely rammed with clothes and boots. Really useful is that there are indoor washing up facilities and uh, on an aside they were also pretty good if you're trying to do 100 push-ups a day and it's uh, chucking it down with rain because you can always go to the washing up room and do your push-ups. As we've mentioned before booking um, if you're only wanting to stay for one night is a bit tricky online but actually the phone line staff that we spoke to were really helpful and the staff at the campsite were lovely they were really really helpful particularly when we discovered that Georgia had pneumonia they were let us use the phone if we wanted to they were just really friendly we've stayed at the Langdale's campsite several times because we've been on quests to do all the Wainwrights and it has a lot of walks that you can do without having to move the van all week if you don't need to and there's also a complete and utter range of different walks so you can stick to the valleys and you can have a nice leisurely poodle as long and as short as you want or you can get right up onto the tops and have some of the most challenging days in the mountains that you could probably get in the UK so yeah it's got it all it's also quite a nice short drive from that campsite to go up towards, is it Hard Knock Pass and Rhinos Pass? Yeah. And um, yeah, you go up to Blee Tarn, which is really, really pretty, particularly on a calm day, lovely for photography. You do have to be aware though, that <laughs> the roads are a little bit tight, a little bit steep, the walls are very close to the edge of the roads and uh, being out of practice, having been in the States for a few weeks, uh, yeah. I had to remind myself how to drive on those roads because it's a bit challenging. Yeah, you definitely didn't want to meet anything, did you? No. <laughs> I have to say, even though we had to cut the trip short and do our little mercy dash to Manchester, we just had an amazing time. It's great to be able to have the flexibility to look for a, a good weather window, which we thought we'd done. We really did have all the weathers in two days <laughs> and that is just winter camper van life and as long as you prepared for it and you've got the the mindset for it it was actually really fun and we enjoyed the splendid isolation of being out in the Langdales and it was just a great way to spend a few days. Yeah it's just nice getting away in the van. So that's it we're gonna try and get moving today we're actually out in the Dales but it is absolutely <laughs> freezing but that's it. Bye. Bye.